And for more on all of this, we turn to two committee members, Chairman Carl Levin, Democrat from Michigan, and Maine's, Maine Republican Susan Collins. Senator Collins, uh, we heard you raise this question as you look at the new strategy of bench benchmarks. How do we know if, if, if we're winning? How do we know how it's going? Were you satisfied with the response? Uh, tell us more about what your concerns are. That is the fundamental question. We need to be able to assess whether this new strategy, which includes a considerable buildup of American troops, plus a stronger diplomatic and economic effort, we need to be able to assess whether it's working. And it troubles me that the administration has committed troops and is coming to Congress for additional resources without having a clear set of benchmarks for evaluating whether or not this strategy is working. That's a mistake that our government made in Iraq until General Petraeus took over and until we had a different strategy and clear benchmarks to measure its success. I don't think we should repeat that mistake. Before building up our troops, I think we not only need to have clear goals, but we need to have a clear set of measurements to assess whether or not it's working. Is that connected, uh, Senator Collins? We heard this exchange with uh, Senator Graham about the costs. Do you think what you're, what you're asking about benchmarks is connected to this question of to the extent that Americans are prepared for costs in terms of lives and casualties and dollars spent? I'm very concerned about the cost to our country. Obviously, uh, the sacrifices of our soldiers are foremost in my mind, but there's also a financial cost as well. One of the troubling aspects of this to me is it is supposed to be a NATO operation, and yet it seems to me that it's always the American troops that are bearing the brunt of the fighting. Other countries are contributing, and there are some exceptions, for example, the British and the Canadians, but by and large, our NATO allies are not stepping up to perform combat roles and they are also imposing severe restrictions, caveats on the ability of their troops to participate. I think we're too quick to build up our troops, and that takes pressure off our NATO allies. Well, let me ask Sen Senator Collins, are you suggesting that we should not commit these troops until we have the benchmarks more in place? That would have been my preference. First thing that the administration did was to commit 17,000 additional combat troops before it had completed its review, which has led to this new strategy. That review was needed. I give the administration credit for devising a new strategy, but I thought it was putting the commitment of the troops uh, before completion of the strategy. Now there is a strategy and 4,000 additional troops are going to be committed, but before we have the benchmarks. There are some general benchmarks, as Chairman Levin has mentioned, but I want to see very specific benchmarks. For example, in the area of economic support, we should be looking at how many farmers have we converted from growing poppy to growing alternative crops. We should be looking at convictions for corruption. We should be looking at other measures of economic progress. On the defense side, I think the administration needs to embrace a more ambitious goal for increasing the size of the Afghan army. I don't think the size that they are looking at is sufficient, and most military experts with whom I've consulted have reached that conclusion as well. So I'd like to see a, a series of benchmarks for the training in, of the Afghan army and increasing the size by certain dates. I want to see far more specificity. As, and Senator Levin, let me come back to you briefly on, on something you raised earlier, which is about Pakistan and some doubts you raised about their commitment to fighting uh, the Taliban in their own country and on the borders. 
What uh, flesh out your concern a little bit more for us there? Well, we've seen too much evidence of uh, collusion between uh, some of the elements of the Pakistan intelligence units with uh, the Taliban. We've seen the deals made between uh, the Pakistan government and the Taliban in a number of areas inside of Pakistan. Uh, we've seen a uh, failure of will on the part of the Pakistan leadership too often uh, to uh, take on the religious extremists in their midst. And it's essential that they do that, not because we're pressuring them to do that. It can't be us that are buying their support uh, for their own stability. It's got to be their decision as to whether or not they are willing to take on forces in their country which are going to destroy their country if they don't take them on. But they've got to make that decision. And before we provide support to Pakistan, be it financial or more military aid, it seems to me that we should, we should determine whether or not their goals are the same as ours in terms right. of taking on the religious extremists or whether we're going to be perceived as trying to buy something that they wouldn't do themselves. All right, let me ask for a brief uh, final word from Senator Collins on that issue. Say a big issue for you, too? It is, and Senator Levin is exactly right. I'm very concerned about repeated reports that members of the Pakistani military intelligence agencies are actually helping support the Taliban in Pakistan and in Afghanistan. This is a threat not just to our security and to the security of Afghanistan and the entire region. It is a threat to the very existence of the Pakistani government. So that government needs to make a firm choice. And I am willing to give them lots of aid if they make the right okay. choice. Okay, Senator Susan Collins and Carl Levin, thank you both very much. Thank, thank you. you.